Hey everybody, this is the LEGO DC Super Heroes Aquaman Black Manta Strike Set. This Black Manta sub looks very elegant in an evil way to me. Until I turn it like this. Those protrusions there look really weird and it's kind of blocking around the sides. This was very striking to me uh, upon seeing it from this angle from these lower angles for the very first time having the thing actually in person because all the pictures show it from angles that don't let you see that weird shape. I don't think that's Lego's fault. I think that's just part of the cinematic universe adaptation of the thing that remains to be seen uh, as of the time of the recording of this video. The movie's not out yet, but uh, other, than, other than that, uh, I think this looks really nice. And the thing about this is that, yeah, it's supposed to be a submarine, but it looks like it could be a stealth-based aircraft. It looks like it could be a spaceship. So I think this is going to be a very versatile toy for kids to play with. They'll swish this around and pretend to be flying with it and not just using it in an underwater setting. That's a really cool thing about this, this type of fanciful design. It doesn't look like it has to be a submarine. I think it's going to just help with imagination a lot. This has the six stud shooter on the front. You rotate this manually to fire off the studs one by one. There's no geared mechanism going through it. And this also has the, the uh, spring-loaded shooters, one on either wing, if you will, which is good because I think these are much more useful, more accurate, and less frustrating than the six stud shooters. These you know, fire off the studs, and the studs just go everywhere. They give you, they give you spares of those. But I mean, especially in gray, uh, for a lot of surfaces, those will just simply get lost. Uh, whereas these are just brighter, easier to see, and they work better. They knock minifigures over very effectively. They shoot fairly straight. I like those. If you don't want to use them, you don't have to. But I think it's a, a good play feature. This actually looks... Whoops! Haha! <laughs> this actually looks pretty uh, respectable from the underside. There are no weird colors exposed down here. They even use the red color for the inverted tiles under here. And uh, I think that's good. It's a little bit weird that they didn't put any of those inverted tiles on the on the very base on the lowest surfaces. So if you're just kind of scooting this around on carpet, these corners will get caught. Even, even on some harder surfaces, those will get caught. But uh, eh, it's just there for structure. But I'm glad that you don't get a ton of blues. Just a little bit in there, but I'm um, uh, I'm not going to complain about that. You can see a little bit of yellow from the back. That's actually not bad. But, you know, it's not one of these cases where you have lots of green and tan and stuff showing through. I hate it when they do that. So I'm glad they're being a little bit more thoughtful about that. And this has a cockpit that holds just one single figure, of course. There, I took the hatch off so you can see in there a little bit more easily. I like the trans red colored windscreen or just front window piece for that. Not necessarily a windscreen if it's being used under underwater right but uh, there are a couple of consoles one on either side just a small sticker sheet for this whole set uh, and you don't need to apply the stickers if you hate stickers it really doesn't take anything away to leave them off and i'm glad that there's an actual compartment there for black manta's weapon you know it's always nice when they consider that so just in general i feel like this is a very considerate build it just thinks about or the designer just thought about the kids that are actually going to have this in their hands and be playing with it. It's very, very swishable. doesn't have any small items that will break off easily. It's just a good toy, I think. And then there's just this one side build with the shark on top of a bit of seaweed. You get a couple little outgrowths of, of treasure down there, gold in color. And this, to me, looks way better than it should. I mean, it's the simplest thing, but I really like the use of the dark blue. I don't think Legos ever used dark blue for a seabed element before like that, you know? Uh, and it just, I don't know, it looks really grown up to me. And with the use of the dark green color for the seaweed piece, uh, rather than like a, a bright green, you know, they, they've moved to brighter and brighter colors. And using these darker colors, I don't know, it just feels, yeah, it feels more appropriate for the current cinematic DC universe or just DC universe in in general but especially you know the relatively more recent stuff i don't know it just looks it just looks good to me here's the momoa aquaman complete with his gunmetal gray colored trident with just a little extension for the handle and a power blast piece in the transparent light blue uh, they have a total of three of those power blast pieces in this set and i think they're absolutely perfect 
for these characters and they also work well. You just aim where you want, pull back or push back on, on the uh, little extension back here and then it'll just fire off. They fire fairly straight and it's just another very useful item for play. You, know, you can actually shoot at, you can actually aim and hit a target with them. Uh, nice prints for this guy, for sure. Uh, top to bottom, I think. And yeah, pretty good quality overall. You do see some seams in the uh, the pattern for the gold. It's just something that's always going to happen because they have the gold flakes and they kind of flow into the mold. And the print on the back of that torso is very good. The alternate face is very good. Let me show you what that looks like with hair on it. Yeah, that's that's actually excellent. Really, really captures Jason Momoa and captures the the essence of Aquaman here. I think that that torso print with those scales looks just fantastic with the two different golds and the different amounts of printing on them. That's that's so well done. It almost looks three dimensional there. I love that. And uh, just looking at the the front, let me take this weapon away just so you can see that a little bit better from some different angles. Really appreciate the scales and how they almost appear iridescent. Yeah, that's 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 really good stuff. And then here's Mira actually Jang. It should be pronounced Mera. Actually, it should be pronounced Mera, but it's pronounced Mira. This figure looks great as well, not just because of the scale detailing on this one, which features the blue color. Actually, I believe that's a blue color printed over silver, uh, you know, with a, a transparent coating on that but I might be mistaken they may have actually mixed the colors together to get the metallic blue but whatever it is it looks good but I just really appreciate the teal here or the turquoise color and the use of so much of it and it makes this whole figure stand out when was the last time you saw a Lego minifigure made with that much of that color I mean <laughs> they've only recently reintroduced that color period for use at all I don't know about this this face I, I might I might see in the movie some some cases where that face shows through I can imagine uh, Amber Heard making that face but I don't know if it, it quite fits but I guess this one's okay as well I think the, the faces for this one just don't match as well the character as portrayed in live-action form as the the Aquaman did but still a very good figure, a good toy figure. Fortunately for Lego, they already had this this mold for the Black Manta helmet, and, you know, full head set up and the breathing apparatus and everything. So they just needed to set this figure up with the color scheme and print for the movie adaptation and they were done. And I think it looks fine. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, definitely close enough. The, the prints on the torso are good, I think they could have been a little bit better if they had gone with a, a finer print for the black. They actually printed black on top of the black plastic, which is a technique that they've used a number of times before, I think, to better effect than this. There's no actual minifig head beneath there. But uh, yeah, just if you use finer lines for the black on black, you can create some interesting textures that when the light hits it right, it really looks interesting and brings in some, some different depth. And here they just used really thick outlining around all of the, the prints that are already there, which is, is okay. But uh, yeah, I think it just could have been a little bit better, but it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. And I think it's, again, pretty appropriate for the live action adaptation. Overall, I think this is a very good set in every way. Um, to be honest, I'm not even an Aquaman fan. Uh, not at all. I've, I've never been interested in any way in that character. But I can still appreciate everything that they've done here, including with the Aquaman figure itself. The price to part ratio is not the best here, but I think that's okay. Because to me, the price to volume of stuff ratio here is is very appropriate. It just seems right for, for the amount of stuff that I see in front of me. And also considering the quality. I mean, I'm not putting too much weight on the fact that, you know, that figure looks looks really nice it's still just a figure ultimately but i think the size of the sub is good the number of figures is good and even that little side build is nice and usually you know they bump up the price quite a bit when they include 
include an animal as well but i feel like even beyond that just overall this set gives you a proper value and good quality through and through there you go those are my feelings and i'm sticking to them thank you very much for watching and i will talk to you again as soon as i can